So you're going along in life one day and you're offered a new job, but you got to move your family, give up your friends, give up your church, and you kind of like the job, but you're not sure what to do. How do you decide? Well, we're going to talk about that a little bit today and in the lessons to follow. Okay guys, welcome back. So you are not in the wrong place, just in case you are wondering. This is the course on scriptural authority being hosted at the church at Life Park. But I'm doing this first video on my ministry page, God's Word Made Simple, just so that we can get some introductory matters out of the way and let you know what to expect. So back to that question in the very beginning. What you'll usually hear someone say is they'll wrestle through the pros and the cons and all of this stuff, and there's good wisdom to that. We're going to talk about wisdom and reason. Um, and then eventually in the Christian world, someone will usually say something like, well, you know, I've thought about it and I just have a piece about it. If you struggle with making decisions and trying to figure out the best way to make decisions that will honor the Lord, especially as a Christian, you're not alone. That's a common human problem, and it actually goes all the way back to the Garden of Eden. You can check out a little bit in Genesis, I'd say chapters 1 through 3, if you want a little context there. But Adam and Eve struggled with making good decisions too. In fact, their, their sinful decision ultimately led to humanity's downfall, their downfall, and breaking the whole world. So if you're feeling anxious about uh, bad things happening when you make bad decisions or you're not sure about how to make a good decision, you're not alone and you probably didn't break the world all by yourself. But that doesn't mean we're off the hook. And if that's you, I'm not picking on you. We all do that. But that's kind of the point of this course is, do we let the emotions rule us? God gave us emotions, right? Or is there a better way? And if so, what's the place of emotions? Well, again, that's a little bit of what we're going to talk about here in this series. So today, again, I'm just trying to do some basic introductions. And by the way, I was a member at Life Park for a number of years, enjoyed teaching a class and doing a bunch of other stuff there as I was able to. But if you want to know a little bit more, you can check out AaronHawk.org. All right, so before we go any further, I'm going to do a quick teaching on two verses, and I do mean quick, on two individual verses or, or probably a couple more verses than that, but two sections. And then I'm going to give you a quick overview of what to expect from this course. And uh, also I'll give you some contact information if you want to reach out to me directly. And in editing, I will put the scripture down here that we're going to go through, but be like the Bereans in Acts 17, 11 and search the scriptures yourself. So get your own copy of the Bible and search it yourself. I, I strongly recommend paper copy instead of digital for serious study for a few reasons, distraction being one of them, but also because digital is easy to change. So anyway, that's a different lesson, different day. I'm going to get us derailed. So that said, let's turn to Matthew chapter 21, verse 23. And in context, because context is king, if you've done hermeneutics, if not, that'll make more sense later. Um, this is right after the parable of the uh, barren fig, which was right after the cleansing of the temple. If that doesn't mean anything to you yet, I, just go ahead and read it on your own some other time. But when Jesus is doing these things, the Pharisees are not happy about it. The Pharisees were the scholarly, academic, uh, um, religious leaders of the day, they tended to they tended to be a little legalistic. I'm going to leave it at that. All right, so verse 23. When he, Jesus, entered the temple, the chief priests and elders of the people came to him while he was teaching and said, by what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? So they don't like what Jesus is doing. And again, there's a lot in the context here that this intro video, I'm not going to get into that. Study on your own. We can talk about it in class. Um, but they don't like what he's doing because he is upsetting what they have always done. Their tradition is being challenged. Their own personal experience is being challenged. And he's messing with their heads and the way that they've always thought through things is being challenged. And if you don't know this by now, Jesus loves challenging us in those areas. And this course is all about that. That's the crux of this course. 
because Scripture should be primary, but so often we don't actually make it primary. In fact, most of the time we don't even realize that we're counting on other things. Like the example I gave you in the beginning of this video, well, I have a good feeling. Well, maybe the last time or two you made a decision like that, it worked out, so your experience is telling you it'll be okay. Or maybe you are reasoning through it and you've just convinced yourself that it's okay and therefore your emotions are following. And I'm not sure of a good example for tradition for that one. I don't know, maybe you move once a year and that's your tradition. I have no idea. Yes, you can laugh at me. It is okay. But I want to zero in on this question. By what authority are you doing these things? This is a question the religious leaders posed to Jesus. Now, Jesus, of course, is God incarnate. So uh, he is not only an authority unto himself, but he also pointed to God the Father here and elsewhere as his authority. So we're just kind of bouncing off of that one in this intro. And it is a challenge to you, and hopefully your goal in this course is to grow in maturity. So with that, let's turn really quick to Hebrews chapter 5, verses 11 through 14. Now, I am. this is a hard section. This is a hard couple of verses, as in hard teachings. It's not comfortable and warm and fuzzy. It's okay. We shouldn't always be warm and fuzzy. But verse 11 is really the beginning, but what I want to zero in on is verse 12. So um, concerning him, speaking of Jesus, we have much to say, and it is hard to explain since you have become dull of hearing. Now, again, I'm not accusing you of that. This is a common human problem, and there's a specific context here in the book of Hebrews. But what I want to pay attention to is verse 12. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you have need again for someone to teach you the elementary principles of the oracles of God, and you have come to need milk and not solid food. And then you can read the next two verses, but right now I'm just going to stop there. Now again, I'm not picking on you, so please don't take it that way. I don't know you. Um, but this is a common problem in Christianity, and especially in modern Christianity, where people have access to the Word of God, and yet... We don't have this sense of a need to grow in our faith. It's, it's kind of like floating down the river. And if Scripture is our authority, then we understand that's not okay. And I want this verse to help you grow in your faith. I want, at the end of my life, to be able to stand before God and hear those blessed words, Well done, good and faithful servant. I don't want to hear you didn't do this, you didn't do that, you didn't do that. I know I will at some level, but I want as much of well done, good and faithful servant as possible. And I suspect you do too. And that's why I'm bringing this challenge in here, because this course hopefully will help you in your faith. And I also know that other courses at Life Park also are designed to help you grow in your faith. So sometimes we may not understand the connection. You know, this seems academic. Um, I don't know how this applies to my life. But so often those things help us learn how to reason through for things like this. How do I make a biblical decision? Okay, so let's do a quick overview of what to expect for the course. We're going to be meeting three times on August the 1st, 8th, and 15th. Prior to this, you will be emailed a pretest. So we would really appreciate your help, and this really helps me with earning my doctorate. Um, we really would appreciate your help in completing that pretest, and then you'll take the same test again after the course, and we just want to see basically were we at all effective in helping communicate these things to you, or do we need to change something and what? And hopefully that will give us that information. By the way, it is all completely anonymous. I will have answers, but I won't know who gave those answers. So don't worry about that. So anyway, again, August 1st, 8th, and 15th, we'll be meeting in person at Life Park, and each, each day is going to be broken up into two sessions. Each session will be about 45 to 50 minutes. So between sessions, we're going to have about a 10-minute break. We'll, you know, ebb or flow a little bit with that. But each session will be about 45 to 50 minutes. On the third day, we'll have extra time for Q&A. So those sessions should be a little bit shorter. We'll probably do three sessions that are shorter and give lots of time for Q&A. Um, I will also be available for Q&A after each class, as long as you want. 
But anyway, August the 1st, we're going to be covering session one is essentially how do I know what source of authority I'm using? That's really the focus of the first lesson. We're going to be looking at a couple of scriptures together. Each day, I hope to have some practical object lessons for you as well. So this isn't going to be purely lecture, although it will be some lecture. I hope that we'll dialogue some too. I love asking questions and getting people's responses and then responding to that. So I hope that you're the type that will uh, give me some feedback, but if not, that's okay. I, I know how to keep moving if you're not the type to answer out loud or, or whatever. Um, but I'm hoping this will be fun and not just purely lecture, so I've designed it that way. I hope that that will be a benefit to you. So again, lesson one is primarily dealing with how do I know what I'm doing? We can't fix a problem if we don't know it. So how do I know what source of authority I'm using? And again, we'll do an object lesson, we'll look at some specific scriptures together, and we'll dialogue about that. And session two, also on August 1st, is going to be beginning the discussion. We'll have to finish it on the second day, August 8th, but we're going to begin the discussion with lesson number two on August the 1st. Essentially, how did we get scripture and how do I know if it's reliable? Now that second part in particular, we're going to kind of leave you on a cliffhanger, uh, not completely, but we're going to come back to that on August the 8th and really hammer in lesson three, how do I know I can trust the Bible? So the first one on August 1st, lesson two, we're introducing it. Lesson three, we're really going to hammer, how do I know I can trust the Bible, especially in a world with so many different religious texts and ideas and all of that. So the 8th, August the 8th, we'll do the how do I know I can trust scripture. And then the fourth one will actually be that big word. You may or may not have heard of it before, but I referenced it, I think, earlier. Uh, hermeneutics. Basically, how do I read to understand the Bible? So hermeneutics is the big fancy word for it, but it's essentially what we do in everyday life. How do I read a letter and read it appropriately. If I read a love letter from one person to another, I can't assume that's to me. There's a context there and I have to respect that. We do that in everyday life, but we don't think about it when we go to scripture. By the way, I would strongly recommend, this is not required as part of this course, technically I can't require you to do anything, but I would highly recommend you check out my series, Four Secrets to Life and the Bible. In that, I walk you through a basic paradigm of hermeneutics that Life Park also uses. So uh, there is an updated version, that video was recorded prior to the update, but it's the same thing. Um, I, I highly recommend that you watch that before August the 8th. So that gives you a couple of weeks. Um, it's three videos, if I remember correctly, and it's a grand total of like 40 minutes between the three videos. So it's not super, super long. It's not super heady. It's just enough to give you an idea because again, we will be covering that on August the 8th and it will just help you in the class discussion if you already have some framework. By the way, Life Park has a class on this subject. So you can ask Noah about that. August the 15th, then we're going to introduce something known as the Wesleyan Quadrilateral. Essentially, I've already referenced it. We have scripture, experience, reason, and tradition. Those are four sources of authority to which we often appeal. How do we put them in the right order and how do we hold ourselves accountable to putting them in the correct order? Or is there a correct order? That's what we'll be talking about in our uh, session on August the 15th. Okay, so that about sums it up. So here's my challenge for you. I want to leave you with this thought. By the way, you can reach out to me, contact info here. You can reach out to Noah if you have any questions. But I want to leave you with this question or thought. What do Legos have to do with interpreting the Bible? You got to come back to class to find that one out. See you on August the 1st.